Thank you for joining me. This is Fly My Phantom. This is the updated video guide to repairing the loss of video feed from the camera to the DJI Vision app. Also going to answer some questions as well. Uh, this camera is also referred to as the FC200 or the egg camera due to its unique shape and is found on the Phantom 2 Vision quad. Now that's quite an old quad and the problem is after a period of time uh, this camera loses its ability to transmit and all you get is a spinning circle on iOS devices and you just get a blank screen on the Android devices. Now a couple of things to note. Um, first of all, regards to iOS, uh, iOS 12 and below is the only iOS that will support the Vision app. Uh, anything over 12 and you will find problems. Now one of the problems as I found on an iPhone Max was that instead of displaying phantom underscore MAC address, it just showed Wi-Fi, uh, and then obviously you get the phantom connection broken message. Uh, the app on Android is best suited to Android 4, Android 5, and a little bit of Android 6. See, what happened was Android changed the way it deals with internet, and because this doesn't have internet but forms a Wi-Fi connection, Android gets a little bit upset and occasionally will kick you out of the app or freeze the app up. So if you're going to be using one of these older units, you really need an iOS device lower than iOS 12 uh, and an Android phone or Android tablet that's on Android 4, 5 and 6 at a push. In this section, I'm going to show you the fault as it occurs on your iOS device or Android device. I'm going to go into Wi-Fi and we're going to choose the Phantom Wi-Fi there. It takes a few seconds to connect. We're then going to launch the app. Once the app's launched, you see it says the Phantom there on the top. Click on camera. And then as you can see, all you get is the spinning circle. And this will spin forevermore. So this camera is a definite contender for being repaired. Okay, so what parts are we going to need to actually do this repair? First thing we're going to need is a USB to TTL, an F2232RL or an FTDI serial adapter. This uses a mini USB connection, so you will need a USB to mini USB uh, cable. Now these boards come in all varieties and flavours. It is recommended uh, that you get one that's shown in the picture here that has the jumper and can output 5 volts. Okay, I'm going to show you how these are wired up a little bit later in the video, so don't worry too much about that. Alright, so we're now ready to take this camera apart, having assembled all that you need. Uh, we're going to need this, a 1.5 hex screwdriver. Uh, we're going to need some solder to solder the wires on. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver to take out some of the Phillips screws. Uh, and cable uh, for the T-tail adapter. Now, I've got this on eBay, and it has little plugs on the end, which fit nicely onto the USB T-tail adapter. You're going to need a solder iron. This is the KSGER. You're going to need one with a really f nice fine tip on the end of it, because you are dealing with extremely small pads. Uh, I also like to use this and set flux. This just helps the solder to flow uh, onto the solder pads. And that is about all that you need. So let's get on with actually taking this apart. Okay, so to take this apart is really easy. There are four screws, one, two, three, four there. We're going to use the one and a half mil hex driver. We're going to take these screws out. I shall fast forward this because it's rather boring watching me take screws out. With all the screws out, you'll now see that uh, this case will come apart. Now, you notice I'm not taking it off the vibration plate. No need to take that off whatsoever. You can leave that on. It just saves separating it off. What you're going to do is you're going to grab it here like this, and we're going to pull this off. Now, it sounds horrible, but it does come off. And as you do it, turn it that way, because otherwise this little button here will fall out. Just literally just give it a little squeeze, and as you can see, then it separates. And that's the bottom of the case. So you're left with this. Now you still need to take this off, and this requires a little bit of brute force, but trust me, it sounds worse than it is. Just put your two fingers either side there and just give it a little push, it'll go crack, and then you can just wiggle it off. There you go. It's not broken in any way, shape, or form. It just sounds like it has broken. That's it. You're now into the guts of the camera, ready to start taking the boards out. Okay, so next thing you take out these four screws here. There's one there, one there, one there, and one there with your Phillips screwdriver. These are very tiny screws, so make sure you've got somewhere uh, to put them when you take them out. I have this rubber pad on the desk, as you can see. 
all the little places to put the, uh, the screws. If these ping off, they're going to go somewhere, you're never going to find them. So do this on a workbench or kitchen table or something where you can get the screws if they fall out. And then last one here. Now I do have magnetic screwdrivers, but for some reason DJI decided not to make their screws magnetic in some way. Uh, so you have to just basically just give them a little shake and it should come out there like that. Okay, so that's your four screws out. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna lift this board out and it's connected with little push connectors. I'll show you that once you get the board out. Just push from the back like this, lift up, and it'll separate and you just need to gently wiggle it. And if you give it a pull, you'll see this ribbon cable here, just lifts up and just pop that out the way like that there. We've now got two more screws, one there and one on here. So I'm gonna take those out. And that one. That's one. Which one does not come out there? That's the other one there, so that's two. Now be careful with this board here because as I lift up again with just your thumbs, you will notice a wire. See the wire? You just focus on that. That wire there controls the fan underneath, so you be very careful. You don't want to pull those off or snap that wire. Now in here, uh, there's two post screws here, one here and one here. Uh, you can use a flat blade and turn them around, but I have this special bit that I've got with a well screwdriver. You can see it's perfectly shaped uh, for these, uh, these post screws. Now, I didn't have this when I started doing these. It was a bit of a nightmare getting these post screws out. So bear with me a second while I just unscrew them. And that one as well. I'll show you these once I've taken them out so you can see what they look like. Okay, let's give them a little shake. There we go, that's one, two. See if I can get this to focus on my hand. There we go, you can see, if I just turn it that way up, you can see that's the post screw there. As I said, you can use a little flat blade just to turn them down if you want to. Um, but it's always best if you want to do this. Go on these wild screwdrivers, comes with an absolutely shed load of bits and has this perfect bit for doing this particular type of repair. Okay, so again, all we're going to do, we're going to just push from the back and lift up and it'll just pop. And this is the board that we we'll want. And this is the board we're going to be working on. So I'm going to put this out the way. We don't need that. I'm going to just show you this board. If I can get it to focus for me, there we go. These here are what we're going to be soldering to. This one over here is what we're going to be soldering to and as you can see they're extremely fine now there are a couple of spare ones just on the outside here you can find a couple of spare ones to practice on so i would suggest that maybe if you're not altogether sure it's just have a little practice on the pads that you're not going to use uh, that way you can just make sure your soldering skills are up to shape if you damage any of these pads doing it then my suggestion is to stop right there and send this to someone who can do the repair for you but this is where the new video comes in because I've been told about these by a chap called Keith and I've done the video for the Vision Plus with the same things. Uh, basically, pogo pin clamp. You just have little spring-loaded contact points there. You'll notice number five is missing because that's not in use. And the reason for that is because on the board here, you can see there are one, two, three, four, there's a resistor and then there's the number six there. And this just clamps onto those test points like that and they are all then absolutely perfectly touching the only wire you will need to add on is this one here to the tp10 and that's to put the unit into boot mode wiring up is dead simple if you just follow the wiring diagram you'll notice here you've got two five volt leads and then the contact points for rx tx ground and what i've done is i've just got an additional five volt cable here taps onto the USB board and then that's just tapped into the relevant socket on the pogo pins itself as you can see here it's dead simple dead easy I wish I'd known about these five years ago uh, it wasn't until a chap called Keith got in touch and talked about them so I said I've done the Vision Plus and now I'm showing you on the Phantom 2 Vision how easy these are to use and I'm going to show you I'm going to download the tool and I'm going to plug it all in and show you just how easy these are to use so we're going to need the tool. Uh, the tool's available on my GitHub page here. I will put the link down below for it. 
Uh, at the moment, it's version 9. That may change in the future. If it does, I will be updating the video as needed. Just left click on it with your mouse and then come across the right hand side here and click on download raw file. That will then download into your downloads folder and is ready to be installed. Once the tool's downloaded, you'll find it in your downloads folder. Double click it. You get a pop up normally like this. Click on yes. And it says welcome to the install program. Click next. Some writing there, feel free to read it. And the same writing here and you will need to agree with the terms and conditions. If you don't, you won't be able to install it and use it. Click next. Now listen, very important. It's got to be installed here in your user's profile. If you try to install this anywhere else, it won't work the tool. It has to be in that particular uh, directory location. Click next and then let the tool run through. Once it's done, click next and exit and then close it out. And you will find there's a shortcut appeared in your desktop. I'll just put that there as you can see. And that's the tool once it opens. So the tool downloaded and installed, we're now ready to run the Flash program. First thing to do is make sure you've wired up your TTL board correctly. Double check, triple check, make sure you've wired up correctly as per the picture which you can find on the tool itself. Just by clicking picture showing board wiring here. Double check, triple check. If you make a mistake, you might be alright, but sometimes if you wire it up wrong, you may cause damage to the board. So it's very, very important uh, that you check your wiring. Okay, so with the tool installed, we're going to plug in our USB to TTL adapter into the computer. And you should hear. Once that's done, we're going to go over to the tool itself. You'll notice it says at the top, choose USB port. Drop that down and you should see a USB serial port. If you don't, run device manager and see if you've got the tool installed. If the actual TTL adapter hasn't installed correctly, you will need to install drivers for it. What we're going to do then, we're going to click on Run Putty to check boards in Boot Me mode. And the little screen will open. This is now where you take the red cable here and you're going to touch it to the board on the back. As per the picture on the tool itself, which is here and it shows you where to touch it on the board at the back here. So watch the screen as I now touch that to that particular component. there we go the board is now in boot me mode and is now ready to be uh, flashed you need to make sure you close out putty if you don't the tool won't work and then you need to do then is to cl click the button mark push to flash original files now there are two sets of files uh, for the phantom 2 vision uh, if you try the first one it doesn't work my suggestion is to try the alternate files this is all automated you just need to sit back and wait for the tool to run through and program the board up I'll do this in real time so you can see it actually happening on the screen. Needs no intervention from yourself. You just sit back and wait for it to run through. There you go, that's sending the data. And then this will go up to 100% and it will be finished. You can hear the cat crying in the background. I've got a cat that's gone a little bit unsure after having visitors over. There we go. You can hear it in the background. Okay, that's it. All done. So let's make a start on, on wiring this up. Okay, so that's that all soldered up. As you can see, I'm going to focus. I'm on focus, there we go. There is four here, one here, that's five, and then the TP10 there is all soldered up and ready to be used. So now, of course, I just need to put these wires on. Now, you'll notice I have this little wire here. This is an additional uh, power supply wire. You do need two lots of five volts coming off the TTL board uh, to, wire, uh, to repair one of these. So I'll just show you, I have put uh, another five, if I can get to focus, you can just solder the wire onto the pad here that's marked 5 volts. So bear with me while I just wire all this up. Okay, so now we're going to plug it in the T-tail adapter. 
just as a side note, you may not have the drivers installed for this. If you don't have the drivers installed, then just do a Google search for the drivers that are fully available on the web. Okay, so using the new tool again, you just need to simply drop down where it says USB serial port. And as mentioned, if there's no serial port showing, check device manager for your drivers. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on run putty to check boards in boot me mode. So I just now need to put the board into boot me mode. I'm going to turn the board over like this because I have this rather great for board holder. And I'm going to touch the pin as shown in the picture. And then what I'll do is I'll go back to the other screen and you should see that's the board now in boot me mode. And again, close that out, click OK. And then you can plus, uh, flash the original files or the alternate files as mentioned in the previous segment. It is a fully automated process. You can just sit back and you can let it go through. Second part. If you get to this point here, where it's waiting for, and you get any kind of weird text, any loop round, anything that doesn't look right, if it doesn't follow this particular path, then the NAND chip on board, uh, the board itself has failed uh, and it isn't repairable. Um, you, you can't do anything with it, it's just totally banjacks, unfortunately. Uh, your only option would be to buy uh, another camera or maybe just sell the quad and move on to something newer. Not that I want to do that, I like the fact that these old Visions uh, and Vision Pluses are still being sold and still being flown by people. They were in the time a great piece of kit after all. Well that's it, final part of the tool flash. Job done and it says don't forget to leave a comment on the video. I will update that with version 10. And that's it, that's the board flashed. So now the rather laborious and boring job of putting this all back together again. Uh, just a few quick notes. Each little board has a corresponding socket and plug on it, as you can see there. Make sure they all go back together again. So I'm going to drop that in there and I'm going to just, you'll hear the click like that. This top one as well will go on. I need to put these screws back in here, put the board back together and sort it all out. I'll do all that off camera because it is literally the most boring job on earth and takes me about five minutes. Just as a side note, when putting this board in with a wire, just be very careful you don't pinch the, uh, the wire on it, put it back in and try and keep the wire uh, out of the way as best as possible, or else it will all go badly wrong for you. And you'll end up trapping a wire and they'll end up not having the fan working. Okay, so with this top board, now you need to fold this ribbon and slide it in between the two boards at the back, like that. And then you just have to wiggle it in. It's a little bit fiddly to get in, so just bear with me a second. There we go, that's in place now. Now it's very important when you put this top board in that it sits flush and it sits properly. Uh, if you don't get it level, then it doesn't make a proper connection and what happens is the board then doesn't work properly so make sure you give it a firm push down if you have this you see the gap there it's not going on right so just give a little bit of a wiggle and make sure you hear that nice click and you'll now see that gap has closed up so let's put these other screws in okay so uh, the phantom wi-fi has appeared so let's launch the dji vision app click on camera and we keep our fingers crossed that this camera is now working Spinning circle, always get that for a few seconds to start with, and there you go. It's actually all working. Obviously, it's upside down because the camera is upside down, but you can now see you now have a fully working Phantom 2 Vision camera. And it's taking you probably half an hour at most to repair it. Uh, so that's it. That's the repair done. I'll put all this back together again. This is going on a quad that I've got that someone wants to buy off me. Uh, if you've got any comments at all, please ask the question, but do check the Phantom Pilots forum first of all lots and lots and lots of information in there about this particular fix so any error messages anything you might encounter check there first of all if you like the video obviously give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button i'll put a little icon here to uh, to remind you to subscribe and with that all done uh, it's time to end the video thank you very much for watching uh, take care and as always fly safely